Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm not here with Geeky Sparkles. I'm going to talk about the death of another video game website. This is Touch Arcade, and I want to be very clear. I'm actually pretty upset about this. Uh, Touch Arcade was one of the few video game websites out there that was sticking to the news, sticking to reviews. They they stayed in their lane. They reviewed video games, mobile video games, uh, mostly iOS games, Switch games, because Switch is considered a mobile device, I guess. Uh, anything portable. And um, they've been around for a very long time by internet standards, like 16 years. And I've been following them probably for at least... 10 or 12 years, and I knew something was up because I've been backing them on Patreon for a while. I mean, it, it's probably been six or eight years or however long they've they've had their, their Patreon um, because I actually do like their content, right? And uh, I know last week they put a post out that they were gonna talk about that they were gonna make an announcement because the updates were fewer and further between, and I kind of figured this was gonna happen. And we're gonna talk about this because it is almost impossible to run any kind of a niche nerd website in 2024 unless you have corporate backing. And these guys, I believe, were independently owned. Um, you know, they did not sell out to Gamers Group or one of these other big conglomerates, you know, Valnet or whoever else is, is buying up websites these days. And even those big corporations, they're having a really hard time, uh, you know, gaining a foothold. Now they're having a hard time monetizing. It, you know, we have multiple websites and they are, I can't even express to you how bad it is out there for uh, a website trying to survive in this economy. Google basically shut the traffic off to most websites earlier this year. It started last year, they had a couple of updates, but you know, we talked about the AI snippets and that is kind of the kill shot. When you search for something on Google, you know, you're looking at the uh, the list of results. Well, now they've got these, uh, you know, AI snippets at the top of the search results. And Google will basically give you a paragraph and summarize the information for you. So you don't need to go to these websites, right? And the reason they do that, they're saying it's making it easier for, for the user, which maybe they are on some level. But the reason they're really doing that is they want you staying on Google's search page because they have ads. And you could think to yourself, well, why aren't they sending them to publisher websites that also run Google ads? Well, the truth of it is, is that they have to share. If they send the traffic out to another website, they have to share. Google would rather have you stay on their site where they can monetize you more effectively. And then they want to keep you in that ecosystem. And it's kind of the same way with YouTube right now. YouTube, um, has definitely changed in the last couple of years. And I, I think it's the new CEO. And um, is it Pichai? Is that his name? Uh, Sun, I think it's Sundar Pichai. But his his methodology is, is very different, I believe, than his predecessors. Um, YouTube is kind of looking like Facebook these days, right? I know I've been talking to friends kind of behind the scenes about, you know, what works on, on YouTube and Things aren't working like they used to. It used to be that if somebody subscribed to your channel, they subscribed to your channel and they would get notifications and they would find you more easily. And now, like, people don't get the notifications. They get recommended old content. I'm getting, I'm getting people coming in and commenting on videos that are like four years old, right? They're news videos that aren't even they're not even relevant anymore, but that's what, what Google is, is recommending to people because I, I believe because of AI, they're like, Oh, this, if you like this video about this topic, you'll like this other video from four years ago that is completely irrelevant now, you know, and people are like, Hey, this is old news. I'm like, Hey, I didn't, I didn't push it to you. Google did. Anyway, we're going to talk about this um, because I think this is the year that we're finally going to see all these websites implode. And um, I know that, Clownfish TV when we were doing more articles over there, which unfortunately I had to let people go because of this situation that, you know, the traffic has just been shut off almost completely. But uh, we had Peter Pischke, who does the Culture Scape podcast. Check out his podcast. It's really good. I actually did an interview with him um, a couple of months ago. I think it was about two months ago, and it went really well. And he's a good guy, and he's he's one of the, the few on his pop culture journals left. But um, 
yeah, he did an interview with uh, the gentleman who was in charge of Giant Freaking Robot, and he's built multiple websites. And he said that this year he thought everything was going to implode, and it is. And I think we're going to see a lot more websites die, nerd websites die this year. Um, I, I've heard that uh, Comics Beat apparently can't even find advertisers now, direct advertisers, and I don't think they're getting traffic anymore. I mean, everything's broken, right? And it, I think a lot of it has to do with the way that people – consume media. They're not consuming media in the same way that they, they used to. And uh, they're not going out to websites. And honestly, Twitter, I, I mean, talk about a turnaround. I mean, my personal opinion, like Twitter actually now under Elon Musk, I mean, some people can argue about the politics over there or whatever, but it actually feels like this is what the app was supposed to be, which is bite-sized bits of news and commentary and whatever. And it's kind of like the TikTok for news. And that's that's what it feels like. And that's what people want. They're not going to go out of their way to go find your website. They'll, they'll consume your content if they're already on that platform. If they listen to podcasts and your podcast interests them, they'll, they'll do that. If they're on YouTube already and your content, uh, content interests them because it's, it's, you know, they'll, they'll listen to your content. Um, but they're not going to go out of their way. They're not going to go to your website. I mean, the worst thing, <laughs> the worst thing that people can do, like, um, oh my God, uh, what was the, the one, there were some YouTubers, they were going to like pull their content off of YouTube and they were going to go start their own streaming service. I'm like, that's the dumbest damn thing you could do. Nobody's going to find you. Right. And rooster teeth tried that too. They're like, we're going to paywall all of our content. And you're going to have to go out to, to rooster teeth, the website to watch our content. I'm like, that's going to kill you. Like, what are you doing? But that's, it's desperation, right? And the views are down. This is, this is desperation. Speaking of websites, speaking of money, guys, got the clownfish minus. Uh, we, we are paywalling some content. Some people are getting stuff early, but we are not going to pull our content off of YouTube. Do not worry about it. Uh, we got some merch out there too. Check out those hats. I like this hat. This is, the, these are, the, these are going to be my new official hats. Um, but go out to clownfishminus.com, become a reefer. You get your first month 50% off. Please subscribe to the channel for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Uh, I got to give a hat tip to Black Sage D, who actually sent this over this morning. And um, yeah, he said that this goes to show that even sites that primarily focus on mobile gaming aren't safe from closure. Touch Arcade was founded during the heyday of smartphone gaming. Yeah, and they tried to pivot to Switch, and it didn't, didn't work either. Gaming media is on its last legs. We've already seen five major news sites. Shut down this year. We're going to see more. So here's their official post. Uh, this is a post I've known was coming for quite some time, they said, but that doesn't make it any easier. After more than 16 years, Touch Arcade will be closing its doors and shutting down operations. 16 years. That's, that's a pretty good run. There may be an additional post here or there in the coming weeks as we try to honor any previously agreed to obligations. And a proper farewell post is in the works, too. But as of now, our normal daily operations have ceased. The reason we're shutting down probably isn't a surprising one. Money. Many of you who have followed Touch Arcade for a long time are well aware that we've had financial troubles for many years now. Yeah, because they're independently owned. It's hard. And to be frank, I think it's a miracle we've been able to last as long as we have. The truth of the matter is that a website like ours just doesn't make money anymore. To our own detriment, we've resisted things like obnoxious in-your-face advertising, egregious clickbait headlines, or ethically questionable sponsorships, which sadly are the types of things that actually make money on the internet today. They're not wrong. They're actually 100% right in this. Um, yeah, they're, they're right. They're right. Uh, I mean, have you been to some of the websites now? Like they're so desperate for money that like you can't even read the article. It's just it's just basically just a wrapper for ads. The Daily Mail is like one of the worst ones out there. Like, oh, do these. And then you always go out to these websites and they're like, oh, you need to you know disable your ad blocker. It's like, why the hell would I do that? This is a pain in the ass. I'm going to go to Twitter. I'm going to go to YouTube. I'm just saying there are a number of other reasons that have contributed to us reaching this point, but I'd rather not get into it. Uh, Touch Arcade was an institution for many millions of people over the past 16 years. Yeah, they were pretty popular. It was my full time job for the last 14 plus years. Damn, a solid one third of my life. In many ways, it's like one of my children and having to say goodbye is very difficult. I'd really rather focus on all the great times we had than dwell on the things which we cannot change. And it, this is the thing. Like a lot of people are cheering this on. They're like, yes. 
gaming journals down. Yes. Clickbait pop culture. Touch Arcade was not one of those sites, right? Uh, Touch Arcade was actually, you know, started in 2008, but it felt like a relic from another era. In a lot of ways, it felt like a site from like the, the late nineties, early two thousands, like what IGN used to be. Um, but it's almost impossible to, to run a website like this now, unless you're owned by a corporation that, that just knows how to game the system. And even then they're, they're living on borrowed time. Like they're, they're basically going to pump and dump, which is, you know, they're going to pump up the traffic inflate the numbers, find a sucker to come along and buy their websites. And they're selling these websites at fire sale prices because there's no money the, the advertisers are pulling their dollars from the websites. They're, they're pulling their dollars from banner ads and they're putting their money into video and into sponsorships and because that's, that's what people consume now. They're not going to the website to read, you know, 1300 word articles. And that's true. And we've, you know, we've been publishing, we, again, we have multiple websites. Some of them, you know about some of them, you don't, but we've been doing this for a long time, like 15, 16 years ourselves. And We've seen it change, right? It, it's just, it, it's changed. Everybody said pivot to video. They weren't wrong. I mean, I think there's still a place for websites to some degree. I think that some people prefer articles. I think that, you know, there are some authors out there that do do well with like Substack and stuff, but you're almost going to have to sell your content directly, right? And it's hard to do that. It's hard to make a case for having people pay for your content when you've been giving it away for 10 or 15 years, <laughs> you know, and everybody's used to getting news for free. And if, if they're not getting it for free from you, they're, they're going to get for free from somebody else. So you, you better be pretty damn special if they're going to give you money. I'm just saying you gotta be pretty damn special. That's hard. I mean, it really, it, I, this, this, this sucks. I did not realize that, uh, this was, you know, a full-time job for them for you know, 15 years. He's a man with a wife and two kids and a mortgage and all that other fun adult stuff. This is the end of my livelihood. And despite them being freelancers in a technical sense, that's true for the other two people who have been doing the, who have been the beating heart of Touch Arcade, Sean Musgrave and Mikhail uh, Manani, who uh, this brings me to my next point. Please hire us. Jared Nelson. Yep. Um, Sean, I'm not familiar really. Uh, okay. He's been part for seven years. Mikhail has been the workhorse posting the bulk of what you see every day. Okay. So I didn't realize who he was. Um, these two, I know Jared and Sean, I don't know them, but I've been watching them, listening to them for a long time now. Uh, Sean lives in Japan. Yeah. So these are, these are some of the good ones, guys. There, there are good ones out there. I keep telling people there are good gaming journalists out there. Uh, touch arcade was not corrupted. In fact, they tried very hard not to be, they probably could have taken, sponsorship dollars they could have you know that it would have kept them afloat maybe they could have done you know they could have pivoted to to clickbait trump headlines in fact i actually just at curiosity i went and did a search for trump and they did talk about trump not in a negative but they were just like oh these wacky trump videos or whatever but that was like years ago like they're not out there like polygon kataku like the right wing or all right nazis are taking over the gaming space no they've just st stuck to news and it wasn't enough it's really sad, but they're going to continue the podcast, the touch arcade show. They're going to try to, they've had 600 episodes of that. Um, yeah, you're going to be wondering about our Patreon. The support from our Patreon has far and away been the biggest contributor to touch arcade continuing to exist since we launched it in June of 2015. Okay. So I, I actually got into the ground floor on that. Um, almost a decade ago, our thoughts are to pivot the Patreon contributions toward keeping the podcast going, which I'd be totally fine with and perhaps occasional posts or special features written by the staff. Um, that does it. Yeah, this is, um, yeah. So there were a lot of people involved in this. There's a lot more people involved in it. I thought it was just a couple guys originally, just a couple guys starting it themselves. Then I thought maybe they sold out to another company and they didn't, but, um, this is going to happen more often. And there are going to be some, some websites that get shut down that I think, Stayed far too long. Kotaku, Polygon, I'm looking at you, especially Kotaku. Uh, I cannot wait. There will be a party the day that Kotaku shuts down because they have become everything that Touch Arcade said they were not going to be. They become a clickbait farm. Uh, they Kotaku and Kotaku editors uh, stoke the fires of, of hatred and divisiveness, and they basically have single-handedly turned gaming journalism into a big fat joke. 
you know, everybody lumps gaming journos in with Kota the worst of Kotaku and Polygon now. And, and that was not the case. These guys, uh, from my point of view, anyway, they, they had the spirit of like the old EGM um, crew that they just want to talk about games. And it's unfortunately the way the Internet is now, it's just not enough anymore. People say they want that. They don't really want it. I don't think they want it. They 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 want games and commentary, but they want games and commentary that align with their uh, ideology. You know, I think in a lot of ways, uh, and it's just it's sad. It's really sad because this is like the end of an era, right? And I don't know where things go from here. Um, but here here's kind of a follow up on Twitter. Uh, if you're in the gaming industry and looking to hire or know of any job openings, please let us and the staff know so they can land on our feet. You can reply. Uh, here or email us at uh, tips at toucharcade.com. If I had the means, I would hire, hire them. I, I, I absolutely would. And finally, if you have any good memories of Touch Arcade over the past 16 years, feel free to share them with us. Here, our audience was our entire reason for doing this for so long. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a damn shame. The dust, another one bites. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's hard because, I mean, I feel... I feel really bad because because of the Kotaku's and the Polygons and the Waypoints and and even at those sites, I'm gonna be honest, there are a couple of people that actually were pretty decent, but they got lumped in with the worst of the worst, right? And uh, you know, because now like you have you have editors like Alyssa Mercante who is like the face of gaming journalism this year. She's this year's flavor of corrupt gaming journo. And because of that, the whole thing has has suffered. And I think a lot of gamers are turning away from from gaming websites entirely because of how corrupt the bigger websites have become. And it is affecting sites like Touch Arcade. So RIP, I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe. We will talk later.